now. Last I heard, he was doing the the Blackcraft stuff, but I think that like yeah. fell through. But man, how good was it when he was there? It's pretty cool. His story arc was so good. That's actually how you got me into Blackcraft in the first place. Yeah, it's just the the whole idea surrounding it. I was just like, it's like almost like cult wrestling kind of style. Like, yeah, I just. I don't know. I, didn't I buy, like, I think I bought those, like, first couple episodes. Actually, I need to go back and see if they put more on there now that I think about it. Yeah. You bought Shit, all there of There might them. be some That's gold on there I forgot them. about. I remember Andy, Andy and Jesse was on that one pay-per-view in Pittsburgh. Yeah. That was the reason that the both of us were like, yeah, we'll watch it. And then you were like, dude, wait until you see who's in this. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were who got me to watch it. It's really good. Like I like it. Like I'm like I said, I'm not really sure what's going on with it still. If they're still doing stuff or not, I kind of I don't kinda, know. I don't know. I, I haven't heard anything. I got one last like paper, not pay per view, pay per view. Yeah, I got one last like event thing from them, and uh, man, it was just really, really bad quality. Like it was still good wrestling and stuff like that, but like the quality of the of the recording was just so terrible, and like people right. people just kind of like were really tearing it apart. I I just don't know if like. I don't know if they ever done more after that. And it was really bad that it was done so bad, too, because it had, like, Pentagon Jr., like, main event and stuff, man. It's cool shit. Like, Do you think it's because... I, I've been wondering this myself. Do you think it's because the oversaturation of the wrestling market right now? I mean, right now, there's... What wrestling market? Uh, well, you know what I mean. I feel like it's extremely oversaturated in the sense of look at what all you have to watch right now that you did there's prior. So many, there's so many things that you can just stream, and there's mm-hmm. so many independent uh, companies and stuff that are just doing this right now. It's kind of hard to stay afloat and be the big dog, you know? Yeah. Um, and look at the- who's making a relevant comeback. Oh, company-wise, not individual. But uh, what used to be tits and ass wrestling? Oh, Impact? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Um, this... All of these signings? Yeah, they've lost a lot of people. But for all the people they've lost, they've brought in some great talent, man. He's awesome. Slater, uh, Brian Myers. Uh, they brought EY back, which I love, man. Because, like, Saw that. Impact's always kind of done EY good. And, like, I've always Gallows been an and EY Anderson. fan. Gallows and Anderson, which is huge. Diana. Mm-hmm. She's champion. I saw that. Yeah. I didn't watch the match. I just see the cliff notes of stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I didn't EC3. Get uh, my subscription thing ran out. And I just don't have the money right now. Sorry, Impact. Uh, yeah, they got EC3. I had a feeling he would go back there. Um, I did too. Just, you know, they did him well there. Uh, I, I had a feeling that uh, Brian Myers would go there just because he went there before for a little bit. And w- the little bit he was there, they, they treated him pretty well. You know, made him tag champ and stuff like that. And had some cool feuds. Just some good stuff. And uh, I don't know where but I was where, like like from what I gather from like their podcast and stuff. He's like a big TNA mark too. So, so where do you think for that matter? Where do you think uh, Ryder ends up? I don't know. Probably, if I had to guess, probably Impact. He just he's waiting. He wants it to be more of a surprise or something. Just yeah, I could see it. I could see him going. Yeah, can't have it. Can't have an episode without him. Can't have one of these without that cat getting up into the shot. Thanks, Leo. But if I had to speculate, I'd probably say Impact, just because where Heath and uh, Myers went, and where, like you said, where Impact's doing some big signings right now, and, and yeah. like I was talking about, where they lost some people. Like they lost Tessa. Um, they lost so many people because of the the speak up mm. movements and stuff. Uh, they lost Joe I, Ryan. Uh, I read. I don't. I don't know if you saw this yet. I just saw it literally before we started recording. Uh, some dirt on the dirt sheets on Tessa that she essentially extorted Impact to say, "Give me one hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars, and yeah, I'll give you your belt that. back." Yeah, man. So she, they just she, made a new belt. She did a Jeff Jarrett. She did a Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> you can't do slap nuts on the slap nuts. I don't even know if I'm mad at that move, man. She pulled a slap nuts move. It's pretty boss. <laughs> I'm surprised that she even tried it. To be honest, it's pretty awesome. Like it's funny. Like don't get me wrong. Like I'm not. You know, there's there's a lot of I know rumors I know, I know. going on about her right now. I'm not trying to say I'm protest or anything, oh, yeah. but uh, and you know what? Holy shit, that's I, a cool move. I wouldn't be surprised because I didn't at first. I didn't think that he would. I would not be surprised if. Um, 
Ryder doesn't end up at AEW. And the reason I say that, it's not because, you know, everybody leaves. Oh, they're going to AEW confirmed. It's not that. But the fact that Downstate is who did his entrance music, where he's yeah. so tight with Cody, makes yeah, me think uh, that that is a possibility. It's possible. Um, and I, I think he'd fit. That. He would fit there. He'd be, he'd be I think good he'd for fit. that. He'd fit in there. He could be a good main eventer. I really think he could be. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he'd fit. I don't see him as main card champion. I see him as secondary. Like, he could be the TNT champion very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think he needs to be relegated to tag team only because he is a good worker. He's a great singles uh, competitor. He doesn't need to be. Uh, same with Myers, man. You know, Hawkins, what yeah. you call him. He's a great singles wrestler. They don't need to be just, I mean, not that they shouldn't do tags because they are good at tags. Like, I'm not trying to say they can't do tags, but it's same with Heath Slater, man. Like, they're such good singles competitors. Like, stop relegating them to, or not to really, yeah, I guess relegating them is the word. But stop it is put, relegated. Yeah, stop relegating them to, you know, to a, to a division that, clearly has people that want to be there right let those guys shine and put these guys in the divisions they're wanting to be you know man because like like cardona you know right or whatever we call him cardona dude he wants to be a scott hall he wants to be a hulk hogan a macho man you know that's that's his that's who he looks up to you know uh myers right. is big on the ecw guys and and the impact or the tna guys and like you know the wcw like it seems like he's just there's there's clearly like an era of wrestling they want to represent. It's just like you know, fucking let them do it. Like stop putting them in these, these weird gimmicks, man. And even though they still get these gimmicks over, and I'm not saying these gimmicks are bad, it's just like they're better than that. But plus, Myers really loves the bare minimum. It's true, bare minimum, Brian. So I think he could make anything work given any circumstance. I personally like his whole. Uh, the Prince of Queens thing. Like, Me too. I think that's a cool gimmick. I think the attire is kind of lame. I think he needs to do something else. Um, but I do like the gimmick. I like the name. Um, but imagine too, man, what if hypothetically both of them end up at Impact? It's going to take me a long time to get used to Impact and not TNA. Uh, yeah, I still want to call it TNA all the time too, man. But it's just all like... The time. But it's just impact. Uh, hypothetically, they both end up there. What do you think that that does for for them trying to brand Major Wrestling Figures podcast? Hmm. I'm gonna do say. Do you think they? Do you think Impact tries to jump on board and say, "Hey, put it up on our YouTube. Put it up on our." Make vignettes and stuff that tie into our regular stuff, like being the elite does with AEW. Obviously, I kind of hope, um, because like uh, without really, uh, I think people don't even realize that they've they've been influenced by Zack Ryder, Matt Cardona, whatever you want to call him. Um, you know, more than they think. Um, that the what's that Ring of Honor wrestler's name? Dan Housen. He 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 made this post the other day, and I and I saw it, and I was like, that really got me thinking. I was like, he's right. Like, so like they were saying, like the, the question was like, you know, name an influential uh, somebody that's influenced people that you know they may not realize, or something like that, or you know, just say an, an influential wrestler, and he he picked Zack Ryder because the YouTube stuff, because like he would do things and make his own vignettes and, and and he got it over and it got him over in the audience and it kind of threw a curveball in the the writing team and shit because he knew how to work it he knew he was smart he saw an avenue and did it and then and then being the elite like took it a step further you know and then like and now yeah, they've raised yeah. the bar and now people are going to try to raise the bar even further and i yeah. love it i love the idea that we all know it's staged but they kayfabe the story in certain areas to keep it alive. And just, it's fun, man. It makes it so much more fun. And, like, I honestly, as much as I love AEW, because you know I love AEW, I still probably say I enjoy being the Elite more. It's just, I love seeing that side of them. And then when you see those jokes in the ring and shit, it makes it even funnier. So you like, if I'm, if I heard that correctly, you, you prefer... Being the elite to AEW as a whole, uh, I probably prefer being the elite to wrestling as a whole. 
Like, because it has I, it has wrestling included in it. So I, I, I don't know. I feel the same way to a degree. Uh, actually, for the vast majority, I'd say I agree with you. I prefer being the elite. However, I will say I've noticed this as of late when I catch up on being the elite episodes. They are worse now because they're incorporating other AEW talent into it. Like, I saw some segments and stuff where I'm like, this sucks. This isn't why I'm watching Being the Elite. Yeah, what's funny, though, is comment that you think it sucks, and they'll fucking rip that bit apart, and <laughs> they yeah. usually make a segment out of making fun of how bad that bit was. I did So they listen the to their mo- people. Like It's awesome. The most recent episode, my favorite thing that probably Being the Elite has done since announcing AEW, I would say. My favorite is that 50 plus seconds with Matt for, for 50 plus. <laughs> Dude, that had me cracking up because only they would be like, we can make a bit out of this. Right. And it was perfect. It was so funny. It's so, like, and that's what I love about it, man. They just, it's so dumb. And I love the Christian AF uh, bit that's yeah. going on right now. That's so, like, the fact that they have no, like, they're playing off like they don't know what AF means is so fucking right. funny. Like, they're just, I don't They're know, man. Smart, like, man. People, people will say that like they they get too much credit, or they don't get enough. And for me, I feel like the Bucks, and specifically the Bucks and Kenny, do mm. not get enough credit for what they've brought to, back into wrestling from Bullet Club up to now because they changed they changed the landscape. Mm-hmm. The three of them in particular made it to where wrestlers are getting paid real money, whether it's because Vince doesn't want you leaving and going somewhere else or not. Point is, they forced his hand to be like, you got to start paying people. And uh, so legitimate offers started coming, even if it's for wrestlers that are sitting around not doing anything but are making money because you are so afraid that they'll go to your competition. Right. WCW never made that happen. And that was their biggest competitor. But they never forced Vince's hand to be like, hey, pay these guys so they won't jump ship. But Matt and Nick and Kenny did. And look at it, man. They're building stars, too. Like, I see a lot of hate on the internet. You know, that they're not they're not building people. They're not putting people over and, and doing what they're supposed to do or what, not, what they should do. or They're not doing it right, blah, this and blah, that. They should make Kenny a right. monster. And it's like, dude, why blow your load on Kenny right, off, right out of the gate? Right off the bat, like why give you why give them the cleaner right off the bat? Like like I kind of like how they're hinting that the cleaner's coming back, but you don't really know if it's true or not because he right. still does goofy bits, you know. And I like yeah. that. I, I like that side of Kenny, and it, that just shows the different layers of Kenny. He's like a beautiful onion. You just peel him back, and there's so many layers, so just many so layers. Many layers. It's health layers parfaits. <laughs> the parfaits have layers too. I like to say onions, Take though, so I can layers. peel them back, son. I'm going to say onions, all right? Let's get out of my fucking face with my... It's my bits, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, he's just he's just versatile, dude. Like, he's so versatile. He is. And so are the Bucks, and just... Mm-hmm. So it's Hangman. Like, I like how Hangman went from being like the kind of like the goofy guy he was now. He's like kind of this more serious dude, and you kind of have this, like, you know, this hint that you he's going to align with FTR, or he may... You know, because I like, I th- I really think they're going to shoot for the four rebuilding their own four horsemen. Um, I just don't oh. know who it's go- going to be in it. Um, I just and I'm not really sure if I care at this point, but I would like to see FTR and Hangman at least together. I think that'd be a badass little trio. I do love, uh, and the only reason I thought about it is because they both have the same name, and who knows how much of this is going to end up being staying in obviously because this is kind of serious talk this might be a separate thing but um uh what this could be like 10 minutes do, of wrestling with flop culture <laughs> right it's basically the case uh what i do love is because they have the same name uh brody lee in AEW has been fantastic i've loved it from start to finish that and that was that was an underutilized oh dude that is finally getting what he deserves. Dude, the Dark Order is literally like they're like it's not just a joke when like Cutler's like it's everybody's favorite bit right now is the Dark Order. That shit's hilarious. 
It is funny. Like when he <laughs> when he hits him with the fucking paper and shit, like it's just I don't I know, it. dude. Like I and I love all the people on the internet that are like, they're burying him. He's he's nobody. And it's like, dude, he's huge. He's huge. The bit right is now. huge and he's on <laughs> the main card almost every episode. Right. And they're saying, so how like, is that burying it? Right, and they're saying they're burying Lance Archer, and it's like, dude, Lance Archer, you know, next to Cody is like the baddest, ba- you know, baddest guy in the fucking thing. Cody's yeah. not gonna keep that belt forever, but you don't just, no, you won't, you just don't dethrone the babyface right off the bat, man. Just for the sake of doing it. I mean, he's he's like he is their Hulk Hogan, their Sting right now. You gotta build it up some. You gotta make that yeah. loss much more, you know, tragic. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, the but the the other point to that the other Brody is what I read on uh, something I don't remember where I read it but it said post the pandemic Brody is no longer part of Villain Enterprises and is going as a singles competitor. Really, Brody King? Yeah, he made some statement on it, and I'm sure it's an angle of some kind. But Man. he said that the, he said he doesn't. He wants to be taken seriously as a, a singles competitor. He made like a jokey rib about PCO, and uh, I'm assuming it was Flip he's actually referencing, not Marty. But uh, he made like a little joke about those two and said he's going to be taken seriously as a singles competitor once Ring of Honor's back to regular business, I guess. I- Brody's great. Uh, I think he's. I don't be hate great him getting away from villain enterprises. I don't hate that because no. he he doesn't need him, and I don't think he's he ever needed him. And I think mm-hmm. I, I it was smart for them to put him in there because it was just a good move. And like, oh shit, they got Brody. You know, they got Brody King. It's fucking badass. Like, um, but you know, now that he's stepping away, like that's I'm not. I don't hate that. He's badass. Like he's a great. Oh, yeah. He's a great wrestler. He's a monster. I would love to see his ass in AEW. Oh, big time. Like, oh my God. Like, that dude is like, put the belt on him. You know, like, he's that good to put me. Put any belt on him. I don't care what it is. Yeah, Tag, he's, TNT. He's, he's just that good to me. It also mm-hmm. might not hurt the fact that, you know, he's all like, really into like, hardcore and heavy music and shit. And it's just like, it makes and me best love you. Andy. Makes me love you just a little bit more, you know? Yeah. He's also best friends with your heroes. So that, that makes a big difference. That's true. Randy Williams from E.T. So, if you ever watch this, buddy, you're my favorite guitar player. What do you mean, if he watches this? You know he's a, a weekly watcher. Yeah, he loves the flop. He does actually respond to Dags' Twitter stuff, so that's so he, he very <laughs> well may could make it happen. No, I, I get lucky, and he's just a nice guy. He is a super nice guy. Fun, Anybody who Fun fact, his favorite taco stuff. to eat in one bite is Del Taco. There you go. And so for some reason, that just seems like the type of thing he'd be like, you know what? This is this is Twitter worthy. I'm putting that out there. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that he read it and he goes, oh, this guy watched our DVDs and then just answers it. Like, That'd be great. He made my day guy, so there you go. I do love uh, I do love my favorite thing about Andy ever was, was it in, I want to say it was in Party Poopers, whenever he knocked out his teeth with the Skittles. So they gave him a five-gallon bucket of Skittles yes. and he still ate them. Yeah, and he still ate them. That's like my favorite thing I've ever seen about Andy was that. He just looked so miserable. like, And he still took a handful of them he's just like, and ate them. He's missing the tooth and he still just took a handful of Skittles. That was insane. great. Insane. Uh, do you got anything else? Uh... We're almost at an hour. We did really good. Um, no, I don't really have much more to add. Uh, there was something... God, I can't catch it. Pauls, fix this for me, Juice. La, 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 yeah. la, la, la. Have you been listening to the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast here lately? I've watched a couple episodes there, Brian's. Anyways. What were we talking about? We were talking about... talking about the podcast the major wrestling figure podcast yeah we were talking about okay here we go i'm gonna put my hand up here yeah we're, we're big boys big we're boy. getting professional that's why i'm saying